This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Hello everyone, I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Awake Security. I'm sitting down right now with Gary Galam, who's going to show us a demo of the Awake Security investigation platform. Take it away, Gary. All right, well, thanks for having me back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I was thinking about, you know, based on the conversation we had, what kind of demo uh, to show. And, you know, there's multiple ways that you can, you can demo something, right? You can go through and say, look at all these cool features. Um, I actually like more, you know, especially since we talk so much about workflow, um, I like workflow-based demos where you take a particular problem and you just work through it. So I was thinking that's what we'll do for this one. Okay. Um, the problem focused on for today or for, for this uh, instance here is uh, spear phishing. Right? So let's, okay. let's kind of talk about that you know, totally agnostically for a minute. Right? So, so spear phishing, separate from other types of more you know, general phishing, right? When I say spear phishing, I mean there is a adversary or group of adversaries who have done their homework. You know, they're very interested in, you know, maybe not necessarily your organization, but mm -hmm. something your organization does, information your organization has. Um, and it's it's ultimately that 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 payload, if you will, that they're after, right? So uh, so spear phishing gets a lot of attention. Uh, for good reason, it is a very, very difficult problem to contend with, uh, and it, it in many cases precedes you know a lot of the the worst breaches that that we've seen uh, for literally for decades now, mm -hmm. right? So okay, so so spear phishing, right? The way it's discovered in a lot of organizations today is uh, actually. For very frequently, a user calls the help desk. Mm -hmm. Since we've had you know now years of user awareness training, and uh, users know when they do see something that looks odd to them, a lot of times they'll call and report it, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, all right, you have a user who calls the help desk, says, "I I think I got a message that I think is a spear phishing message. Um, I didn't click on it. What do you do next?" Okay. Right, and that's where. That's where we start to see some pretty big differences across across organizations. Now, uh, fundamentally, uh, what do you do next? What do you know? Well, if it is, well, first of all, you need to figure out. You need to answer some questions, right? Uh, is this spear phishing of the type we should be highly concerned about, um, or is this regular phishing? Mm -hmm. right, so we need to, to figure that out. Um, we need to figure out other things, like does it even make sense for this person to be spear fished? You know, right. Who is this person? What's what do the they motive? do? Yeah, well, you know, does, does, this, does it add up to be spear phishing? Right? So there are a lot of questions we need to figure out. And the reason we need to figure out those out, the reason it's so important is, you know, in the case the user calls and says, I didn't click on it, okay, so we can assume that, that their attempt you know, the attacker's attempt failed. But if it is spear phishing, if they are after some type of information, they're not after the user, you know, they're after something else, Do, does anyone believe that that attacker is going to stop because the user didn't click an email that was sent? Mm. Or, you know, it was caught by some gateway product or something like that? Of, of course not. Right. Absolutely, of course not, right? Um, so very, very important to figure out if you are the target of ultimately a, com a campaign, right? Yeah. Um, so usually, uh, there's quite a bit of work that unfolds from there, right? So you get you get tipped off. Uh, now we need to figure out who's this user, what are their devices. Uh, let me look at these devices over some period of time. Let me figure out what's going on with them. Uh, is there, you know, if this person is a plausible target, mm -hmm. could they have been targeted and we missed it before, right? And there's actually okay. a lot of other questions that stem just from those, and we'll, we'll look at some of those. Um, so in a lot of organizations, what I just described is uh, frequently multiple days of work. Right? And so this, this gets back to our conversation we had before mm -hmm. of uh, you know, the, the output of one thing being the input of the next and making a very time-consuming, error-prone process. Yep. Right? So how do we eliminate that with you know, an example like this one? Uh, so I'll show you that in Awake. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm going to switch over here. Uh, 
Now, what you see uh, on the screen is just, this is one of the first things you see when you log in. Uh, you know, I, I, I leave this up um, just to you know, kind of give you a little bit more context on, on the system, what we're getting ready to look at. Um, this, this first, this home screen is really designed to train people, teach people how to use the system, teach them and show them through an example-based way, kind of the capabilities that exist within the system. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people, it, it, this actually came out uh, uh, um, after we first launched the early kind of beta version of the system, and you know, people started seeing this and working with it, and you know, we'd hear like, "Wow, this is like, it's like Splunk for the network," but you know, Splunk for for all the data that you can't put into okay. to Splunk, basically, right? Um, and so, when we started thinking about it that way, we realized, yeah, it's a, there's there's a lot of very powerful capability of that kind of query, question, answer mm -hmm. type type functionality in there, um, and you know, we want to make sure that people can use it to to you know the full extent that that is available to them. So. Right. So that's what you see here, some you know, examples that kind of uh, basically show you basic operators and using the system. Here we get uh, more specific examples of a wide range of you know, types of uh, uh, you know, problems that you, you may want to investigate or look into or mm -hmm. kind of take uh, certain types of queries and you know, look at examples of these queries and you know, see so we have a lot of kind of you know, what to do next mm -hmm. sort of, sort of you know, type, type information there. Um, and then this last column is uh, actually a little bit more proactive, where if you have uh, certain things that you search for uh, and, and you want to know if, if, if that appears in your network or changes over time, then, then we have the concept of watch list. But I'm not, not going to go into any of that stuff here. Uh, instead, I'm going to pivot over to the workbench. We're going to get to work. Okay. So uh, coming into the workbench, and let me expand this out so we're looking at all the data here. Um, so what we see, <clears throat> first thing we see when we come into the system is a list of all the, uh, all the devices, all the entities that, that exist within a network. Mm -hmm. So remember how I was talking about we're a full packet capture system mm -hmm. underneath, but the reality is you don't care about packets, you know, sessions. You care about people and devices uh, and the things they do and uh, the types of you know objects that that are exchanged between you know devices on the network and things mm -hmm. like that, right? So, so here uh, are ultimately the results of um, the analytics that we were talking about before. That you know has gone through multiple levels and without logs, just with just with this device that sits there and records traffic, mm -hmm. we've been ultimately able to fingerprint all the devices. And and you'll see some of these devices have multiple IP addresses. Mm -hmm, so yeah. as these devices move around, this is our little, you know, our very tiny, tiny little network here we're looking at. But um, as you know, people have moved around the network, we'll see that. We'll see you know that they, they get multiple IP addresses. Okay. And, and you know, in, in our little office there's not a lot for them to move around, but it becomes very interesting in enterprise networks, you know. Um, and and again, without the integration engineering and, and all the other the work, it takes care of that for you. Done right. Nice. So so that you know just just starting off with what we were referencing that spear phishing example of you know well in this you know if, well actually let's you know look at another type of example right. A lot of times you get an alert, you get an IP address. Mm -hmm. Now I need to figure out what is that device. You know let me look at some traffic mm -hmm. for a longer amount of time or you know, some activity for a longer amount of time from that device, but. You know, if you just limit it by IP address, you have no idea if you're looking at one device or, you know, it's Windows for this hour and Android for the next hour. And, right. So right. Totally, totally, totally eliminate that problem. Um, now, in the spear phishing case, things get even a little more, uh, a little more, a little more interesting, right? Um, because in those cases, we frequently don't start with an IP address. We start with, a lot of times, a email address. So, so to make this one a little more fun, um, you know, a trend that we've been seeing recently is that a lot of times it's people's personal email addresses that are being targeted, right? Like yep. Gmail and stuff like that, in the spear phishing context, right? Because mm -hmm. the enterprise isn't monitoring your Gmail account, right? They're, yep. they're monitoring your corporate account. Um, <clears throat> so. In this case, we're going to start off with user called the help desk, uh, said uh, she got a message that she thought might be spear phishing to her Gmail account, wanted to do the right thing as she's been, been trained, and, and mm -hmm. report it. That's great. All right, let's see, <clears throat> let's see what we can find out. So I'm going to start typing. In this particular workflow, we're going to start with a query. I'll show you that we don't have to start with, with the query-based system. Okay. Um, but uh, you'll notice that as, I'm, uh, as I type things here, you'll see the uh, online help system pop up describing uh, you know, the types of queries that are available for any kind of point in 
um, the, the basically the predicates that, that we're typing in here, okay. um, examples and, and help along the way. But we have uh, one option here for we call personal email address, and I'm going to type in the. Oh, that's not going. I was going to save a minute and, and hit paste, <laughs> but it was not what I thought was in there. Boy, that could have been a lot more embarrassing, right? So, type in the uh, email address that the oh, user okay. gave us, and I'm going to execute the search. <clears throat> So we hit search. What comes back huh. are we see Windows device, laptop, and Android device phone um, hmm. that we can associate with, with this particular uh, email address. Again, no logs. All we did to make this happen, all you know, as, as a user, all we did to make this happen was we connected the, the box to the network, and it's doing everything else for us. Wow. Right? Okay. So um, already enormous, enormous time saving, and, and uh, usually far more. Accurate insight immediately <laughs> than than you know um, a lot of people can kind of do on their own. Mm -hmm. All right, so when I click on this, um, you know we were talking before about how there's a layer of analytics that ultimately identify the things on your network, the IoT, the laptops, the phones, the you know like mm -hmm. we see here, um, and then tracks them around. But then there's uh, analytics that ride on top of that that ultimately start to. Uh, identify well who's most similar to this device and how are these things different from each other, because those are the things that we see. You know, a lot of the most sophisticated analysts uh, ultimately, you know, ultimately able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so over here on the right hand side is where what we see we call notable artifacts, um, which is kind of zero on, on, on a certain type here, SMB. Um, and so what notable artifacts are is exactly that. It's the what are the things that are special to you or your devices in a particular way, right? Okay. And it, so it's not it's not outlier. It's not what's only unique to you, um, because you know we have again when we think about threats and sort of the spectrum of threats, uh, you could have certain types of activity that are a little more common, mm -hmm. a little less outlier, um, but the problem you know becomes sort of manifest or obvious by the volume. Of activity, if you will, right, and then you have the other end of the spectrum where you know just simply being an outlier is is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And so the analytics that that are underneath this are optimized for kind of the spectrum, um, and what we see, you know, some of the things that we see that's special about about Patty uh, is uh, you know her her access of uh, legal related shares and things oh, like that, right? Okay. So we're starting to get an idea of you know the the type of work she does. I see. Um, we can come into here. Uh, actually, I'm going to expand this out on the left hand. side. Side, um, and based on the characteristics we see over on the right hand side, we can actually expand this out, get a little oh, more, wow. a little more detail. Actually, a lot more detail. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So what you're looking at here, actually, uh, it's not something I don't normally point out, but um, along the left hand side, there's a lot of aspects and attributes of uh, you know types of activity between systems that we ultimately enumerate. And now there's analytics writing on top of all mm -hmm. this, trying to identify uh, special. Kind of, or representative, you know, notable uh, activities or actions within you know each of these fields, right? Okay. And so, uh, you know, just sort of expanding out from uh, you know what we we saw there. And oh, by the way, while, while this is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes uh, something that, that catches people's eyes is you know color color schemes and things like that. All everything about this interface, like we talked about for before, mm -hmm. like understanding how analysts think, and how mm -hmm. they use information, and things like that, very intentionally designed. Um, so sometimes that catches people off guard. Um, you know, because a lot of you know, there's a lot of a lot of, a lot of systems out there that basically look like video games and, right. and it's cool, very engaging, you know, very like exciting. Um, but when you're focused on the way people make decisions, ultimately, am I confidently going to take your laptop from you or not? Um, we are actually able to document how the interface, even really cool looking interfaces, they become distracting. When you notice the interface, you're thinking about. Even if it's you know very briefly, you're okay. you're paying atten more attention to the interface than the thought process you're executing. Oh, right? okay, and you wanted I see. to you know, basically eliminate you know that as a source of error for people. Anyways, um, so 
this uh, comes up and we get more detail. We start to see Patty, you know, does a lot of work around, you know, kind of merger and acquisition type, uh, type activity. And so we can go, wow, all right, let, you know, those questions we needed to answer. Uh, does it make sense for Patty to even be targeted from a spear phishing perspective in right. the first place? Very quickly, we went from her Gmail address to her devices to what's characteristic about her. Uh, she seems to, to be in legal. Yeah, you could look in, you know, you could look in Active Directory and see somebody's in legal. Doesn't mean they're an interesting, they do interesting, you know, work mm -hmm. necessarily. Which part of yeah, legal, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What type of work? And so, very quickly, we see ah, actually, you know, it looks like merger acquisition type activity. Um, so yeah, it does make sense for Patty to be targeted. Um, now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep this also a little bit, uh, a little bit sort of on point, kind of quick. Um, but uh, you know, I'll sort of uh, uh, summarize. You know, basically what we see over here. Mm -hmm. When we do go through this, um, ultimately we don't see anything that stands out to you know to like average analyst as there seems to be a problem here with Patty. You know, mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like she was maybe was compromised before, or you know it looks like she did the right thing. Actually, one thing I should point out that, that I forgot to point out is mm -hmm. you know also under Patty we see you know there's some annotations here. Um, okay. If I click on the annotations, yeah. we see actually late last year um, Patty did get compromised, oh. um, and and this is you know this is kind of neat. So this is from an analyst who's not part of the organization anymore, but that that knowledge and that that activity has been captured in the system in the system where you're doing the investigation, not outside of it, right? Um, and so we see that, that she did get, you know, compromised and about a month later did security awareness training, which, you know, good. She called the help test this time. It's mm -hmm. doing the right thing. Um, but we don't see anything else that stands out as, as there being a particular problem here. Um, unfortunately, in almost every organization you see out there, this is where the workflow would stop. And so you'll hear, you know, you hear us talk about, like, a lot of times workflows are inconclusive. Yeah. Patty seems like a target. Yeah, she was seems to be targeted. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see anything I can really take action on. So, so we stop there and right. we move on to the next thing, right? right? Because I have a whole key in my, in my sim. I have a whole thousands of things I need to look at, right? Um, that's a problem, huge, huge problem, right? Again, if this is a spear phishing campaign, would we expect a sophisticated attacker to stop just because one email wasn't clicked? Absolutely not. So, next question: uh, Well, maybe Patty did the right thing, but who else would be targeted? Right, so who else is like Patty? And so we can come over here uh, and click on similar devices. Uh, and what we see is Robert Johnson. And okay. so the system, again, additional layers of analytics now, um, is going through and determining who seems to behave most similarly on the network. Right? Because what, when you do that, what's interesting is people that do similar types of work, they group together um, and same. becomes very, very helpful, not just for spear phishing, but for the gamut of uh, investigative uh, workflows that you, you would do, right? Because if you think about almost any, almost any type of um, uh, malicious activity you're looking for, especially nowadays, uh, a lot of times you don't get the benefit of being able to take some pattern and plug it into Google or Threat Exchange, right? And, and hit search and get results back that say, yes, 100%, that's bad. Mm -hmm. um, Instead, the way the work is evolving now is you kind of have to take, you, you know, you, you kind of have to look at this thing that you're suspicious of, not sure about, and you have to start looking at comparison points. So let me look at other systems, and let me see what's normal for people like you, and let me see what's normal for devices like your device, and let me okay. see if this, seem, you know, if this fits in in some way that makes sense, right? Okay. So, anyways, we see uh, Robert is similar. So let's we'll click on Robert, mm -hmm. um, and this is going to bring up just a kind of another another uh, uh, part of the system, but the the details uh, detailed interface, and so we get a lot lot of information. Some of the same information you saw in the different part, you know, other part of the system. We could come through here and start looking, and we see Robert seems to be focused on you know valuation research mm, okay. and energy and things like that. So so it does make sense that that Robert may be targeted also. And as we scroll down, you know, one of the other things that may catch our eye is uh, the, the associated email addresses, right? And, and this gets to, by the way, this is all real traffic. None of this was, you know, craft in any, any particular way, okay. right? Um, th in fact, this is modeled off of uh, something very, 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 very similar uh, in, in terms of details that we saw uh, just in a real, a real deployment, right? 
Um, unfortunately, we can't show real deployment, yeah. you know, so yeah. we, we approximate as, as close as we can here. Um, but uh, uh, you know, this goes back to the question that, that you had asked before, like what about encrypted traffic? Right. Yes, there is encrypted traffic. There's a lot that's not. And it's shocking where even information like this leaks from places you, you wouldn't expect. Um, and so uh, here we see some 163.com email addresses. Um, a lot of the viewers, I'm sure, may recognize uh, that, that particular domain. It was actually used pretty heavily over the past few years for data exfiltration, a number of certain types of cases. Um, uh, I showed you the annotations. You know, one mm -hmm. thing that we have coming out uh, soon is annotations on these types of uh, data points within the system. So, okay. so if you had seen, you know, say, you know, you had seen that a year ago, and you made a note about 163.com, then anywhere else it appears in the system, your note will appear, so other people know nice. what you've learned. Um, of course. Uh, we can push out that information too. So if we learn that, um, then we can you know, push out those annotations. And okay. so uh, as a user of the system, you basically you benefit from the community. Um, all right, so let me, let me come in here. We'll uh, run a query for that, that 163.com address. Um, now, here we go back. Okay, so that, uh, that address has only been seen uh, associated with Robert's system. We do see Robert's you know, kind yep. of moved around the network a little bit too. Um, what, one thing I do here, since we're, we're looking at a uh, type of activity that is, uh, uh, it tends to be like associated with exfiltration, messaging, you know, if you're familiar with 163, um, I can load, I'm just going to kind of do a, do a shortcut here. I'm going to load a query that okay. was shared with us. And so really I just want to show, uh, you know, saving que queries, capturing queries, reusing queries, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, this query is kind of a neat one because it's, it's very useful for capturing uh, uh, basically uh, uh, usage of non-corporate approved messaging uh, okay. systems and applications and things like that. Uh, and then let me do this just to, to narrow it down a little bit and also show there's, you know, everything's context sensitive based on any type of information you're looking at. So uh, we can just click on it and, and add that to, to our queries and so modify what we're looking for based on, on the results we have there. Um, I'm going to hit search. And so, so the good news is mm -hmm. only Robert's system matches this query, saying you know, okay. we're looking for some kind of patterns of the non-corporate approved type messaging stuff. Uh, the bad news is Robert's mess, uh, system does match. Okay. So I'm going to pivot. So again, full packet capture system, this whole time we haven't looked at a single packet. Yeah. We started with an, somebody's Gmail address. We went to their devices. One Gmail address, yeah. We went to you know learning about their role, uh, l learning about who's similar to them, seeing some system that is interesting to us, even in the context of this particular workflow, and even not in the context of that workflow. Mm -hmm. We haven't looked at a single packet yet. We haven't looked at a single session, right? Um, but uh, you know they they are there. The packets and sessions are there, I promise. They're you know, inventing the, the information. And so um, so what I just did was I pivoted over to activities, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you know we were talking a little bit before about activity IQ. And I you know, kind of made the comment that at the end of the day, analysts, or as an investigator, I'm not interested in packets. I'm interested in activities. Um, and uh, from the very lowest level of the system, it's actually we take network traffic and parse it into activities, and it's activities that start to flow through the analytics layers. Um, so it kind of leads to, to some of the things you see here. Uh, but there were three activities that matched that, that particular query. And we come in here and uh, look at the data from them. Here, let me uh, close that. All right, so we can, we can kind of click on uh, you know, a couple of these here. Um, but I'll bring up this one. All right, so, so we have all the activities in system. I clicked mm -hmm. on just one of the activities here, mm -hmm. and it brings out, it's reconstructed the data and, and brought it back for us. And so what we see is, uh, we see kind of a PDF down here. You may recognize sort of the top of it. You just visually look up a little bit. Um, and we see that the file that's actually being sent out, description of the financing agreement for nuclear power plant decommission. Um, we, you know, coming from from our mergers and acquisition person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going to a domain that we know has been used for uh, data exfiltration quite heavily over the past, you know, several years. Um, in fact, like I, you know, was, was sort of starting to mention, 
the you know what we're showing here is exactly what we we saw in in some of uh, some of our customer and for one customer environment specifically, um, and yeah, and the neat thing is we we started with that email address, a Gmail address. We went to their devices. We could see, without having to do any additional work, we'd see where they've been around the network, which devices they have. Uh, you know, just a single click, we get a summary of what makes that the activity or behavior types of data we see associated with those devices, mm -hmm. you know, what's special about them, um, which helps us answer actually a lot of different types of questions. You know, it's about normal, abnormal. Mm -hmm. um, and then we could start doing the comparison uh, and when we started doing the comparison, that actually led to, and as we frequently see, uh, leads to other issues that you may be potentially even more interested in. Yep. Um, and uh, and we did that in uh, you know a, a handful of minutes. You know, I, I wasn't paying attention to the clock, but I know it wasn't two days. <laughs> it was quick. Yeah. yeah. Like it from like one it Gmail address yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's it. That's, that's incredible. A, kind of one, just one specific example, uh, one one use case in, in the system. And of course, uh, as we were talking about, <clears throat> there are lots that exist. It's not just spear phishing. Right? Yep. It's you know, malware, non-malware, insider, outsider. Right? In fact, the, that's what I kind of like about that last example. Is mm -hmm. one example we, we kind of capture characteristics of a lot of others, um, but the reality is, as an analyst, every day is different. So we're we're designed to support that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for showing me this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, thanks again. Thanks for thanks for giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. All right, and that's all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors, Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.